Welcome to the Design Day presentation for Project 19064 of the Smart Odor Monitoring Network for Pima County Wastewater Management. This is a review of the contents of the current presentation. Pima County sewer system spans over 3,500 miles and covers eight wastewater management facilities. Where there are bends in the system can cause these nuanced odors to escape. These are then filed complaints by local residents. A complaint is then assessed and controlled by Pima County individually. The problem with this is controlling each complaint can be a very time-consuming process in order to locate and treat the source of the nuance order. In order to minimize these nuance odors, Pima County wants to deploy a remote sensing module device in these high-risk locations across Pima County. The benefits to doing this will detect the odors proactively, optimize the chemical dosing and vapor recovery units, as well as decrease the amount of complaints and increase the community satisfaction. Our team members listed left to right include Amy Littlefield, Biosystems Engineer, Savannah Way, Engineering Manager, Yaya Kane, Electrical Engineer, Daniel Gorowski, Electrical Engineer, Renson Ning, Environmental Engineer. Our approach to this problem was to create a sensor module using the CarePool sensor in an Arduino microcontroller contained in a high-density polyethylene container to measure hydrogen sulfide. This sensor module would then upload hydrogen sulfide measurements to an external database, which could be accessed by a smartphone application that would display hydrogen sulfide concentrations based upon location. Here are our major system requirements. The environmental requirements were determined based upon the extreme conditions that could occur beneath a manhole cover where the sensor module would reside. We determined our performance requirements based upon the constraints of the carrier sensor and our feature requirements based upon recommendations from our sponsor as to how we could improve upon their current system that is in place. The size of the sensor module was one of the most important features to our sponsor, being that these sensor modules need to be small enough to be placed underneath a manhole cover. Our interface requirements are all in reference to our app. While we expect our system to meet all of the requirements outlined, many of our requirements could not be tested due to restrictions brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. Parts of our system are spread between multiple team members currently, and the testing facilities that we were planning to use are currently closed, preventing us from testing all aspects of our system. In order to ensure our design met the requirements for the project, we knew it needed to have a few things going for it. We knew the actual sensors would need to be self-sufficient during operation, and that they would need to be able to communicate wirelessly from within a manhole. To that end, we went with a modular design centered around a microcontroller connected to easily swappable PCBs. The microcontroller will be uploading data on hydrogen sulfide concentrations, as well as its own battery level, and positioned to a database server for safekeeping. From there, we use a smartphone app to connect to the server and display concentration data for all sensor modules as a map. If the concentration in an area is getting too high, or if the battery for a module is running low, the app will generate an alert to let Pima County Wastewater Management know of the situation. Here we see the SD card being tested. The SD card will be used to store a backup of the data in case the connection to the database server fails. We'll also be using this to store information relevant to each sensor, such as the ID number the module will use to differentiate itself from other sensor modules. Over here is a quick demonstration showing how the data generated by the sensor module is uploaded to the database server. Essentially, the microcontroller calls a PHP script on a web server to upload the data to the database server. The middle window is a serial output from the Arduino, while the one on the right is a web page running a PHP script to automatically read the database every few seconds. The window on the left is the server manager tools for SQL Server, and is used here to show that the values generated by the microcontroller are indeed being added to the database. For result and data reduction, we were able to successfully perform tests. As shown on the previous slide, we were able to send random data to the server just to test its functionality. On the following slide, you will see that we were also able to read and write to an SD card. And the SD card on this project is used as a backup. Just in case if we have a complication with the Wi-Fi, we can always go back to the SD card to retrieve the data. We did receive all the parts for this project. As shown on this picture, we did put all the parts together inside the container just to give you an idea on what the final project is going to look like. Uh, unfortunately, due to the lockdown and the fact that team members have separate parts, we were not able to physically meet to put the parts together and also the fact that Hydrogen sulfide, which is the chemical that we are trying to sense, it's a controlled substance, 
you are not able to order it or have it due to safety reasons but based on our on our analysis and the tests that we've performed at this point the analysis show low risk and also we are at 70 percent completed for the project this is a brief ex explanation of the sd card test that we've done so the sd card is used basically to store store data as a backup just in case if you have complication uh, with the wi-fi so we can always go back to the sd card and retrieve the data so the sd card is inserted in the micro sd card breakout board and it's connected directly to the uh, arduino atom 2560 mega and everything is connected to the computer we have our code uh, that's basically uh, help us uh, to get the the data and here we have the sensor that is provided by uh, the sponsor and this sensor unfortunately is only set to be able to read hydrogen sulfide that's the reason why we are not able to properly test since uh, with the COVID-19 we are not able to get the chemicals hydrogen sulfide which is a protected chemical however as you can see the sensor is correct it's definitely working I plugged it and it's able to read 26 and then it's gonna go to sleep the goal of our design is to transmit the data in the sensor to the cloud system in real time through the Arduino circuit board so that users can check the pollution situation at any time. Our sensor module will be powered by Leonto battery in order to ensure that our equipment can be used in places with high humidity. All the devices will be installed in a high density polyethane container. This container has a high degree of water resistance and corrosion resistance. It can be applied to a variety of extreme conditions. For our user interface, we are currently finalizing smartphone application. It will be compatible with both Android and iOS. In addition to real-time monitoring data, the sensor will automatically send high concentration alerts and low battery alerts to the user. At the beginning of the project, our original plan was to design a sensor module which can measure both hydrogen sulfide and ammonia gas. However, during the designing process, we found that the sensor device provided by the sponsor can only measure hydrogen sulfide concentration. With the approval of the sponsor, the design was changed from a system that measured two chemicals to a system that measured hydrogen sulfide only. From this experience, we learned that in addition to information provided by the sponsor, as a team, we always need to do more research to completely understand the functionality of a given product. In addition, we also learn to prepare for unexpected situations in advance and reserve enough time to improve or adjust the plan. Our design is sponsored by Pima County Wastewater Management. They provide a careful sensor and laboratory for us to run tests. They also have been assisting in obtaining source code from careful sensor manufactured through NDA. Our mentors and instructors from the University of Arizona are providing us guidance and productive feedbacks. Questions?